My name's Tyler Iverson. I'm a service technician for Cementec. I'm gonna to talk to you today about how we operate the silos and what the different parts of our silos are. We're gonna start with understanding that there are two operations that a silo does. One, we fill our silo. Two, we fill our truck. They work together, but they're completely different. The first thing we're gonna talk about is how do we fill our silo and what's exactly happening when we're filling it. Now, in most cases, you're going to have a cement tanker truck pull up to your silo. He has a compressor on his truck. Those tankers use compressed air to flow cement powder through the cement tubing and into our inlet. Now all our silos, no matter what style, have a maximum fill pressure. This is a very important number. If we put too much pressure behind the silo, we will actually do damage to the filter sacks within the bag house. It can force powder past our filters, past our filter sacks, and into the atmosphere. It can also raise our emergency relief valve on the top of the silo and blow pure cement powder into the air, which depending on where you are is completely illegal. So we wanna make sure that our tanker operator understands that 10 PSI is the maximum pressure he can put from his tanker into the silo. Once that compressed air brings our powder up through our inlet tube, which goes into our silo, the powder, being heavier than air, falls to the bottom. That compressed air then has to have a place to exit. And that's where our bag house comes in. Our tube on the right side then takes our excess air out of our silo, brings it down to the accumulator portion of our bag house, where any powder that's left over in our air also filters out to the bottom. Air is then filtered through our filters in our bag house and exits out here clean. There are several different kinds of bag cleaning systems on our silos. This particular silo has what's called a pulse jet system. Any silo with a pulse jet system has actual filters in the bag house. Six inch round, 36 inch long paper filters. For our pulse jet system, and this is very important, we're going to run our pulse jet system the entire time that the tanker is filling our silo. What it does is it accumulates our air pressure here using sequential solenoids up at the top. The rails come through our bag house and they have jets in the bottom of them. And what it does is it actually jets air through our filters to keep them clean of the cement powder that they're accumulating. Modern silos with a pulse jet system or a normal vibrator system use quite a bit of air. We recommend that you purchase a 60 gallon air compressor from any home improvement store. It doesn't have to be anything special. We just want it to have 60 gallons worth of capacity. Uh, most of those stores sell something in the range of uh, three to five horsepower, and that's all you really need to power the, uh, supply the air to your silo. The question I am asked the most is how do I change my, f how often do I change my filters? It completely depends upon your usage of cement powder. Some customers may only use a silo full of cement every month. 
Some customers use a silo full of cement every week. Your needs are going to vary as to how often you fill up your silo. It is best to start every month to check your filters until we can get an idea of how often you're using your silo full of cement powder. Checking your filters are simple on these. The bag house has a lid with manual handles on the top. Simply unscrew them, take our lid off. There are retainers that hold our filters down. We can simply slide the filter out and check how good they are. Remember, we're only going to use our bag house whenever we're filling the silo with powder. And we're only going to use the pulse jet system when we're filling the silo. 100% of the time while the tanker's filling it up and 20 minutes afterwards is the standard for how long we run our pulse jet. Filling our truck is the other obvious part that a silo does. We're not going to use anything with the air with our bag house during filling our truck. We are going to use our silo aeration. This particular model has what's called a magnahelic gauge on it. The magnahelic gauge simply measures atmospheric pressure between the outside of the filters and the inside of the filters, giving us an idea of when it's time to clean our filters. Once we see this start to approach about eight on our dial, it's time to get our filters out and clean them. Filling our truck uses another accumulator tank that's located in here. We can see two regulators there and our sticker that says silo cone aeration set to 15 PSI. Using the electronic box, simple, on and off, will energize our accumulator tank solenoids and it will pulse air through our airline and through our aeration pads that are inside of the silo. This is very important. It's very important that we have the proper air supply to these. I have found through experience that without proper aeration, it can take twice as long to fill up your truck as it does without proper, uh, with proper silo aeration. All we're doing is simply fluffing the powder inside the cone of the silo. This silo is operated by a gas motor. This is a low profile silo designed to be used as a stationary silo, emptied out, and then it can be moved to a job site, refilled up, and supply cement powder. It uses a gas motor. All silos can be gas driven or they can be electrically driven with electric motors. Once we get our silo set on its pads, its jack stands down and leveled off, it's time to put on our auger extension. It's very important to make sure that you use the proper lifting equipment when you get up to put our extension on. The extension and the cover for it are quite heavy. So make sure that we have something that reaches high enough and get a couple of, and at least have two people to work on it. Once I unbolt my extension, inside my extension tube is my extension auger. Obviously gonna take the cover off here and the cover off up there. We can see the top of my extension has another, uh, my normal auger has another tube. Our extension auger will bolt into the existing auger. Your new silo comes with a cement sock that will hang down from my extension, a band clamp for that, and a tube of caulking. I talk a lot about the caulking when we 
put these silos together. And my rule of thumb with putting caulking on these, and we wanna caulk every surface that we take apart or put back together. Simple rule of thumb. When you're putting the caulking on there and you say to yourself, that looks good, put more caulking on it. In case of a leak, you will have raw powder within your augers. If you're someplace where it's very rainy, if you're someplace where it snows and it's going to sit over the winter time, we wanna make sure that we have that completely emptied out. Most of all, we wanna make sure that we have done a very good job of putting caulking on there. Any water intrusion into our silo is obviously bad. This silo is a gas powered silo. Simple, simple operation. Your silo will have an ignition key with electric start. We'll simply operate our choke, turn our key, start our gas motor. The way that these work is with a centrifugal clutch. So as this motor starts and idles, it will simply idle and the clutch will spin freely, not running our drive shaft that goes down to our auger. As we increase our RPMs, the centrifugal clutch will expand and catch and start to spin our drive shaft to run our auger. We really see a great gain of powder and filling speed by having proper aeration. Remember, when this is full, we've got about 80,000 pounds worth of powder pressing down on this powder within this cone. Anything we can do to keep that aerated helps it flow better and helps my auger get completely full and deliver it into my truck. Setup wise, when you're thinking about setting up your silo, it's important to remember that you cannot back your cement tech truck directly underneath the auger. I cannot set up my silo so I have to back my truck directly in here. I must set it up so that I come perpendicular to my silo to fill, or I can set it up so that I can come at a 45 degree angle to my silo to fill. You will not be able to fit your truck underneath the extension when the mixer is up. So I must come off to the side of that or come alongside this way. As you're thinking about setting up your yard, make sure you're thinking about where I have to drive and how I have to get underneath my silo to fill. There are two lines of thought when filling your truck up from a silo, especially one that has a gate valve at the bottom of it. We are able obviously to open or close our gate valve. Some customers we have leave the gate valve open all the time, run powder up into their truck, stop their motor and call it good. Some customers believe that they close their gate valve, continue, which cuts off obviously our flow of cement powder, and then runs the cement powder out the auger uh, to clean it out and keep it clean. The preferred method of operation, uh, silo operation, is to close your gate valve at the bottom of your silo stopping the flow of cement powder, letting your engine run that's running your auger and run the cement powder out of your auger. It can lessen the potential if you would get any leaks within your auger for any hardened concrete that might form within your auger. Silo operation as far as filling and Filling our silo from our tanker and filling our truck is exactly the same if you have a stand-up silo as if you have a low-pro silo. The controls are just a hair different. We have a lever for our dust collection system. That's our bag house, either our pulse jet 
or our normal silo sacks with a vibrator. We're going to turn it on and run it only when we're filling our silo from the tanker. Normally, it will stay off. On a stand-up silo, you have a jaw clutch at the bottom of your cone for your silo that engages and disengages our delivery auger going up to the top. This is our jaw clutch here. Normally, that will stay fully engaged. Stand-up silos also have silo cone aeration. Two processes to think about. One process when I'm filling my silo from my tanker. One process when I'm filling my truck from the silo. Remember, when we're filling with our tanker, we're gonna turn our dust collector on. When we're filling our truck, we're gonna turn our silo aeration on. This particular model is a 350 barrel silo. So approximately 140,000 pounds of cement powder within our silo. Proper aeration is very, very important with that kind of weight. All that weight is bearing down on our cone, bearing down on our augers. Using a 60 gallon air compressor from any home improvement store will supply you with the adequate air capacity you need to properly aerate your cement powder. Aeration is the key to success to filling your truck quickly. Our stand-up silo, this particular silo has filter sacks. It's, here's our cover for filters. This silo has a vibration unit inside its bag house. This particular bag house has filter sacks. It uses a vibrator to vibrate the dust collector inside there and vibrate the powder off the filter sacks. This silo will use a little bit more uh, maintenance in that the sacks have to be cleaned a little more often than a unit with a pulse jet system. But this is a perfect example of whether we have a low pro or our stand-up silos, simple four hand screws come off and gives us access to our filters underneath. We got our brand new silo, we've got it to our yard, and it's time to set it up. It is important to understand the weight behind a silo. This silo will hold approximately 80,000 pounds of powder in it. This silo has jack stands, four jack stands, one for each corner that will be built, that will be bolted to our standard down here. It's very common for my customers to ask me, do I need plates? Do I need some, port of, some type of support underneath my silo jack stands? Yes, is the answer to that question. It's very important. I have customers that have made the mistake that they think they live in a dry, very stable, um, have a very dry and very stable yard and the rock is real good. If you put 80,000 pounds, which basically gives you 20,000 pounds per standard, isolated into approximately an eight by eight pad, it will put a dent in your dirt. You can use steel plates. You can use large wood pads, similar to what a crane would use. Anything that we can do to diffuse that weight and help spread it out over our ground will help you in the long run. Remember, anything that's on dirt is gonna get wet at one point in time it's going to settle. And we want to keep our silo exactly level. Now, it is not important to jack our silo up way out of the ground. In fact, the jack stands are not designed for that. 
but we, when, we adjust, when we put our jack stands on, we get our pads that we're going to set it on, we simply want to take the bulge out of the tires. Let me stress this and be very clear. Make sure that your silo is stable, uh, level, before you put any cement in it. We have had customers that have made mistakes. Obviously, our single axle is not designed to take 80,000 pounds of weight on top of it. You will seriously damage your silo if it's not stable, level, and prepared to take that kind of weight. In summary, silo operation is designed to be simple. Remember, two simple stages. If I'm filling up my silo from my tanker, I turn my pulse jet system on, run it 100% of the time, and for 20 minutes after the tanker is done filling. The same is true for filling our truck. Simply use the aerators while you're filling your truck, close your gate valve, run your cement powder out, and you're done. Simple operation is what we're after.